How you doing? Hi. How you doing, George? My man, I'm doing great. Thanks for taking the time. Sure. My pleasure. How you feeling? Where are you? I mean, uh, I'm still in San Francisco. I mean, relaxing, really. But I've been good. Uh, finally got in the gym yesterday. Wow. Yeah, so it was a blessing to get, <laughs> just to get up shots. Yeah, I was going to say, how how did the jumper feel? Uh, I ain't even really, I ain't shoot a three, so I just shot like mid ranges and floaters. Cause I know it's gonna be broke. I should have thirty stuff for it. <laughs> it's been feeling good though. Uh, just to be able to get back in the gym, just to work on uh, my game and stuff. Just being able to have a situation to be have a place to shoot at. Actually, really, cause our uh, our main facility hasn't opened yet. So yeah, yeah. You, so that's did, still the thing. Did, did the ball feel foreign, like when you were handling the ball and stuff, or it came back quick? Uh, a little bit. I mean, when I was I was doing uh, some ball handling drills at the end. I probably had like I count about turnovers because I lost like three, four times. So I was like, all right, yeah, we're gonna get back to this. Yeah. But I was after talking. a while it was, it was getting used to it, so I was like, all right. How was how was the floater game? Say it again? How was the floater game? Uh it was good. It was good. That was like by far like the easiest. It just felt good. Like the floater as far as uh the touches. So I felt good about the floater other than the left hand. So that's what we was working on, really. <laughs> You know what's crazy is, um, you know, I do the pull-up pod with CJ McCollum, and I was asking him, like, really get back into basketball shape. And he said that the 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 skill work and you know, the muscle memory, that would be quick. But yeah, running up and down and being at that level, especially chasing guys off screens and just the rigors of the NBA, he said that would be a lot harder than the actual Yeah, skill. I was, uh, so at the end of my drill, I did, like, a one-minute, like, ball handling series, like, just, like, conditioning-wise. And yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna be back in shape. Far as if I ain't in shape, I feel like ain't nobody gonna be in shape. Cause far yeah, as me getting tired, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a different level. But I was tired. I was like, yeah, we can't. <laughs> oh, so do you do you gradually work back into the gym, or do you just go full on right away? Uh, I like to try to like push my push my body just just to see how much it uh, can hold. But after I did that, like I was sore for like two days straight. I could feel like the soreness, but then I was like, "All right, like, see where it's like where I maintain that, and see what's like the biggest thing." But the biggest thing was uh, like the team like gave us stuff to do um, during like the whole uh, pandemic uh, and like bikes and stuff. So for the only bad thing is that the bike like it make your uh, hips tight. So like that was one thing I ain't really like been stretching. So my hips and stuff was really tight just because I've been riding the bikes and stuff. Yeah, well, that's but that's what they want you to do. I think everybody. Every team is hoping that their guys are at least doing some cardio, some yeah. body weight. But yeah, I can tell you firsthand that not everybody's doing it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like 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 Melo was saying. He said to us, uh, he's like, if you give guys a month, two months off, they're gonna take that time off. Yeah. True. Yeah. You know? I um, mean, it's so it's so much wear and tear on the body. I mean, throughout the whole eighty-two games, but I mean. This whole like stoppage that just set your body behind because now you ain't eating the same like you do it during the season, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like just from a, like a nutritional standpoint, being at the facility, having meals prepped, yeah, and yeah. Because I used to all my meals used to just come from the facility, I eat breakfast there, eat the lunch. Uh, oh, my joint just messed up. I'm gonna call, yeah, I'm gonna log right back, there. back. Here we go. Sorry, I don't know if that was me, it was probably me knowing my <laughs> my luck. So you were you, so go ahead you talk just to finish the story about the football because I so oh, about oh it. yeah I was uh, talking about uh, we ran like a spread offense and we ran like this one play where all the linemen will, like let the uh, the line uh, the defensive lineman go through and I'll come right through and they'll be like a wide out dump and then it was just like the whole field just open up but the thing is that the line was like some of the line was too slow so it just the <laughs> linebacker trying to hit me. And it was right across the middle too, so all of them like really kill shots. I well, that was probably like the the one play that I was really like worried about. Like, oh, this one you like because I'm looking back for it to see if he's actually gonna get sacked or not. So when I about time I turn my head, it's always a linebacker, like right there. But I was yeah, like, like outside linebackers just yeah. waiting. But I always had this uh one of my uh best friends back home, uh Jaquan. He was always like he was always there for the hit though. To, so, to to hit you? 
Nah, he was uh, nah, he was on the, our, our line. So oh, okay, he was, okay. always, Somehow he always got there. I don't know how, but he was always there. So you you really love football? It was it was that was your first love, maybe? Yeah, uh, yeah. Cause we really introduced like basketball to ourselves as far as growing up. Me and my brothers and like taught ourselves how to like play until we didn't start organized sports till eight. Then play basketball till nine. So I started playing football. So we used to always play basketball every day, like down down at the house, like play till the lights turn on at night. Then we play like till like two o'clock in the morning. And our aunt used to like tell us go inside. She'd be I mean, like so I, bad. You have, you have this like natural like um, level of fitness then that just goes so far back. Yeah, you I know. think it just starts with like playing with my brothers down. Like they used to try to like just bully me, not no matter what. Like we used to play, so we never played twenty one. We played twenty two. So it's no, it's like if you score, you can just get the ball, like, and go back up, and we play on nine and a half. So you valuable to get dunked on. <laughs> Wait, well, why why twenty two though? So because uh, so like because you get twenty, like it's no free throws in the game. It's no free throws. Oh, so okay. any, anywhere you get the ball, like. If you score, I can just throw the ball, like throw the ball out, and you can just keep on scoring. Or you can like if you get to the hole and you score and you touch the ball, like it's live. So the whole game is just live the whole time. Oh, that's crazy. Who guy? Who is the best football player you played against? Uh, Mike Hughes from uh Minnesota Vikings. Did yeah. You back? Yeah. Uh, wow. he guard he guarded me. Um, he uh, so me and Mike grew up together. We played uh, AAU together. So that was the first AAU team I played on, uh, New Brunswick Tar Heels. And uh, I remember my sophomore year. This was when I was getting highly recruited. He was guarding me, uh, and I was running out route. That was the only part. That was the only time where I probably he got a piece of the ball somewhere. It was, I should have had it. It was, uh, it was like third down, and he tried to overthrow me. And it was just me and Mike Hughes on that side. My brother had like the ball shouldn't have it came to me really. It should have went to my brother because he had like a who was it like a five? It was like five five six dude on him. He should have thrown to my brother because my brother. I don't remember seeing him get tackled not once. Like he really like people just yeah. pushed him out of bounds. Like he was always like the bigger, stronger person like in school. Like ever since middle school, like he my brother was. It's funny because he had like a full goatee like going into eighth grade. Like he had a full chin strap. <laughs> So it was like everybody was like like when I, we uh eighth grade we ended up getting like our new uh football head coach, and he was like I see that we got like some man childs in here, and <laughs> everybody just started laughing because we had like four people on our team that had like full chin straps. Jeez. So it was, just, it was just funny, but now nah, Mike Hughes by far because he also mm-hmm. uh we he was also committed to UNC at the same time as me, and uh oh. UNC like their uh their junior day is called the free show. So that's when uh, Brewer, uh, the wideout coach, he was still uh, he used to run the freak show, but we used to do one on ones against the defensive back, and then Mike went against one on ones again there, and that's why I got him at uh, I got him there. So that's so dope. Yeah, that's great. I see all the comments. Everybody's saying, you know, you got that Sky Bowman. That, <laughs> that thing caught on real quick. Yeah, the Sky Bowman. Yeah, that thing. It came after that first dump. The thing is that nobody really knew that I was. They didn't know you had that, that bounce. Yeah. Because in college, ain't no clear path foul. Everybody just found me. They'll just stop me, like, try to foul me from getting a fast break. But in, like, high school, if I got a fast break, it was always going to be a windmill. Like, I used to windmill everything. Like, when I was with Team Wall, everything was a windmill, like, fast break-wise. So. That's great. Uh, what about, like, your, your welcome to the uh... – Last two questions here before I let you go. What about like your welcome to the NBA moment? What was there like a specific dunk, or was that when you were on the same floor as uh, as Steph and Clay? Uh, I think it was I was on the same floor as Steph. So it was just so like, dang, like you actually here. Mm. So did, he, like, did, he, did he say anything to you like, welcome young fella or something? Nah, it was just because my first time meeting Steph was uh. We played at a, uh, the gym that I'm working out at right now. We played pickup there. So this was like before, the, this is like uh, right after summer league. And it was just like, it was me, uh, Jordan Poole, Amari Spellman, uh, some of the, uh, some Brandon was there, uh, Steph was there, then some of like the young guys from my, uh, Stanford. So we were just playing pickup stuff for, oh yeah, and Seth was there. So it was just crazy. Cause at one point I was going to him, then at one point I was going to his brother. So oh. Like, dang, like this, this is unbelievable. So, like, 
I ended up like sending the pictures to my mom and them, like, because that was my first time I even like actually uh, meet him too. Great dude, uh, great guy. Yeah, he is great dude, humble, down to earth guy. Yeah, so. Yeah, what about Draymond? What did he say to you? I love Draymond. Uh, Draymond, uh, very like big on far like motivating people just to understand like he really help you understand anything away from the court or on the on the court and off the court. Um, I remember. I think we was playing away, Chicago. Yeah, we was in Chicago. Uh, and he was just saying like uh, we had like had like a little team meeting, but he was just telling like the players like, ask about his staff and playing them come back. Like y'all gonna have to understand like you gonna have to understand how to play your role. Like no matter what, like everybody got to play a role like uh, on the team, and that's gonna help like the team build. So that was just something like he like went around like talked talked about each player and like just told us like what's gonna help you like to be able to help you maintain the league, to stay in the league. So he just was going off of that. And that really, like, helped me just motivate myself to just keep on, like, picking up 94 and just, like, being a disruptor and, like, being, like, a a, a pest, like, on, on defense. And, but at times, like, that was, like, it would make me tired, like, to get into the offense. But at times, like, if I got a rebound, I'm gone. I think, I think that's what endeared, you know, all the Warriors fans to you because or so, so early on in the season, you just – you showed that you have this like fearless kind of football mentality. Yeah. You know, and, and, and everybody relates to that. When you, when you start showing that you care, it's like, yeah, that's what, that's what fans really love to see. Yeah. I mean, cause when we was losing, like we was losing some like tough games, but when we played like the young lineup, we started, uh, we played the, uh, the Hornets. And I don't think we had anybody. I don't think we had, we didn't have Draymond. We didn't have, I don't even know if Glenn played a lot in that game. I think out, uh, Alec Burke played a little bit, so it was just all those young guys. And that was like the crowd was like really behind us. We ended up losing that game by two because they changed the rule about the uh, the last year able to run into the backcourt. Yeah, that was and what's BS. funny about it. We we knew that like we uh because we was um we played we scrimmage one day uh during training camp, and I was going to Steph, and I didn't know that the rule had changed to where you're able to run into the backcourt now after the last two minute mark. Darren went to the side, uh, the side out bounce. Yeah. So that's what he did. And it was like, it was like six seconds on the clock. And I was going to step. That's and it. He just ran to the backcourt. And I was like, but then, like, Mike Brown was like, yeah, they changed it. And me and Steve, like, Steve was like looking at me like he didn't know either. So it was like, <laughs> I love that. What last question for me is, um, you know, what, how much, what do you, how much do you love Chase Center and, and just the surrounding area of San Francisco? What a, it's such a great city. And obviously, yeah. I imagine. I mean, you almost with the Cal, so you were close. Yeah. But like, what do you make of Chase Center, the Warriors, the organization, the city, everything? Uh, I'm trying to make the best day I can out of it. I mean, I started off in Oakland uh, when I first came into uh, here, um, as far as like us still being over in uh, mm-hmm. Oracle because everything wasn't done here. Yeah. So I was working out at the uh, where the uh, practice facility at. So I was standing inside at Marriott every day. So oh yeah. I was just like wake up in the Marriott, just walk out, go upstairs, yeah. work out, come back down, go to sleep. So everything like I wouldn't leave the buildings, but as it like time as we progressed over here and got uh, switched over here, I started to like just like migrate around the city uh, to walk around downtown. Uh, like I'm right beside like I'm about twenty minute walk, five minute drive, drive, ten minute ten minute drive, five minute drive to downtown, and I live right beside Chase Center, so it's walking distance. Probably two blocks. Oh, you're in a great neighborhood. Yeah, I love that. I live right beside. Uh, I live right beside downtown. This is like my view. Like it's actually like. A little, little nice, like oh, yeah, that's great. right over there, yeah. yeah. So I'm right beside the uh, the uh, stadium, the baseball stadium, the Giant Stadium. But think about chances that we got our practice facility in our game. It's uh, all there, so, yeah. yeah. So world we don't class. Do too much moving. Yeah. All the guys I talk to, when I ask them their favorite arenas, it's Chase. They love Pfizer. They love the Milwaukee Arena. Yeah. Uh, the, the Garden. Gar- yeah. You gotta love the Garden. Yeah. You know, Boston, guys like Toronto. Did you play in Toronto? Uh, I, we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't get to go to Toronto because that's right when the, uh, we were supposed to. So we were about to have that uh, two-week road, road trip. Right before, yeah. Yep, and then this happened. So, Well, here's what we're – we're going to do this again, and then when you come to New York, I'm going to uh, – we're going we're gonna to connect in person. I'll, I'll get out there too. I got you. Um, you got guy, what a pleasure it's been to see you from – the growth of your freshman year up until this point in a very short, short period of time, but you yeah. accomplished a lot. Thank you.
Thank you, bro. And uh, I, I hope we can do this again. And let me let me see the puppy one more time. He over here trying to trying to bite me. All I hear, I just keep hearing these puppy sounds. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He wants to play. Well, enjoy yeah. the enjoy your pup, and uh, just wishing you all the best. And I'll I'll send you some cool clips from this, and and we'll connect real soon. And definitely have you on the podcast with CJ if you gotcha. want in the coming weeks. Okay, thank you. So thanks, guy. Everybody, be, be well, safe, bro. Take care. You too. All right. Bye.